MMA Ozbreaker, welcome back. Uh, of course, we're welcoming Mike Quicksand Powell to the show. He's been on here a ton of times. We actually uh, walked his way into daddyhood. Um, uh, we interviewed him like three or four times. His wife was pregnant, trying to get ready. Has the household changed much now that the uh, baby's a little bit older and things are a little more established and you kind of know the routine and know the pattern? Like, if- yeah, yeah. Yeah, things are a lot easier now. You know, he, you know, he can feed himself and, you know, you know, all that, all that good stuff that makes things a little bit easier. You know, he's pretty, um, he, he can take care of himself, you know, for the most part, as far as, you know, occupying himself with playing and mm-hmm. just give him some food to eat. He'll eat it with a fork or a spoon, you know, things like that. It's a big, it's a big change. So it's better. Are you, are you finding yourself rushing home to see what, what's new? Like, cause oh, you yeah. know, at that age, everything is new to them. So it's like oh, all yeah. of a sudden, yeah, he, he changes. If I, if I go away for the weekend to do anything, you know, business related or anything, come back. Um, you just, you could see a, a, a bit of a change and just, just everything, you know, his awareness, things like that. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Pretty cool, man. Do you, you used to do a lot of fishing for your, for your downtime. Like that was your time to kind of be by yourself and kind of recollect mm-hmm. your thoughts with the baby in the house, at least, for me stalking you on social networking, I don't see you out fishing as much anymore. No, Is- I am. Okay. I am. Yeah, I am. It's just um, less now. That's all. Yeah. You know, I'll always take a break. I'll always take a break, you know, four weeks out from the fight. Because usually I'm going, going, you know, for an eight-week camp, that's four weeks hard. Take, you know, take the entire weekend off. Go fish, relax, chill, sit out, you know have you know cook out by the fire and just relax man and uh be out into be out in the wilderness and just get you know just get back just get some zen you know what i mean so yeah. does, you, does your family come with you on those on that weekend off or do you is it strictly no. just a mike powell time just 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 me and and maybe you know my 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 business partner uh, mm-hmm. will go with me you know uh one of my good friends fishing uh buddy he'll go with me and then we'll go and just go have a have a good time and is it, um, do you, do you find yourself setting your camps up, getting ready for like, okay, I know these four weeks are going to be hard. So I'm going to set that weekend up. Here's that weekend. What we're doing. You already, like, even before camp starts, you're already making plans for that oh, yeah. break time. Yeah. Yeah. Has that break time changed at all? It's, it's, or it's always been fishing. It's always been four weeks in. Is it always been that way? It's never changed. Yep. It's always been that way. Unless there was something going on that weekend, I'll change a weekend. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? But other than that, that that time off is very necessary and not mm-hmm. just time off and sit around the house time off get away from everything no cell phone service no you oh. know what i mean just, yeah. i mean you i get out i get out to some places that are pretty desolate and mm-hmm. um you know I'm, I'm i'm out fishing in places where i'm i'm sure there's mountain lions sitting up there watching me you know what i mean yeah yeah i, I, get, I get out there like that and i got to watch out for rattlesnakes and things mm-hmm. like that you know what i mean so i get out there <laughs> Are you bringing, do you bring a handgun with you just in case, mountain lions and, and all that stuff? You have it if something I'm with you? Alone. If I'm alone, I will. But if I have someone there with me, I, I won't bring anybody with me that I can't outrun. So if, you know, I, if, I'm, <laughs> if I'm outrunning them, the cat will get them. Instead of me. Yep. I don't have to be faster than the lion, just faster than you. It's <laughs> perfect. <laughs> there, um, what else has changed in your training? You're, you're a little bit older. I mean, obviously you know, a great family going on right now. You, you've, you've spent a lot of time, a lot of rounds, um, single and fighting. You spent a lot of time, a lot of rounds married and fighting. And now you spent a lot of time, a lot of rounds as a father and fighting. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's different in these training camps now for you? I mean, obviously everyone talks about, Oh, it's I'm, I'm older. So I have to take more time off, but that necessarily isn't the case with you. You don't, you never, you didn't get injured a lot when you're training. You never, you didn't get beat up a lot. So yeah. you don't really need, you don't have that old body. Like a lot of us, you know, we're, we're 35, but have a body of a 60 year old. You don't have that yeah. kind of, that kind of body. Has anything really changed for you training wise? Uh, you know, I just always, I, I choose to work more on the physical conditioning now more so than just the sparring, you know, just make sure that I'm fit, you know, that, you know, because if I'm, if I'm staying fit and using, um, you know, strength condition to, to, keep me in shape instead of fighting hard in the gym to keep me in shape. I get a lot more longevity out of it. I get a, a, an easier, breezier camp out of it. Uh, you know, I still spar, I still get after it, wrestle hard, spar hard, things like that. But it's, it's, it's few and far between now. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the rounds are uh, fewer, but the rounds are still there. You know, mm-hmm. we're still banging, but um, a lot less. 
You know, mm-hmm. there's no need, man. I've been doing it, you know, 17 years. I've sparred a billion rounds. There's no need to yeah. see how hard I can hit my partner or how hard he can hit me. I just train more intelligently and focus more on being in shape and learning my technique a, a lot more than I do uh, of going balls to the wall and, you know, and, you know, you know, t- you know, get yeah. a lot of beating on, you know, taking a lot of beatings is not necessary. Yeah. Super unnecessary beatings. And, and I was the biggest, mm-hmm. when I was competing, I was, I was the biggest guy doing that. Like I thought, you know, from an old wrestling mindset, I thought every round had to be hard and you had to go hard every single day to get better. And that's just the way it worked. And, mm-hmm. And I could see how, like, as I got a little bit older and in, my injuries from wrestling started catching up with me, and I was like, I can't do this. Like, it's, it's just not yeah. smart. I like that a lot of the guys that were syndicate are getting smarter about how they train. They're getting, they're getting wiser about it. Now, I saw a post on the syndicate um, Twitter page. They're talking about they have bodybuilders and they've got power lifters. And, of course, they have mm-hmm. fighters over there. So it's like an, all, you know, an all-inclusive kind of gym. They don't, they don't yeah. isolate. You know, it's not an MMA gym only. There's a lot of people over there. Is there ever any competition – Obviously, you can't have direct competition between bodybuilders and, and powerlifters and, and fighters because there's no way to really do that. But is there any guys, you know, guys like a, a bodybuilder comes back in with his trophy or from his placing, and you know, it, it, does that make you know, is any of that going on? Where it's like, oh, he he just got, you know, he just won his thing. I'm gonna, I gotta go win my thing now. Is there any of that kind of inner gym, uh, casual, polite gentleman kind of competition going on? You know, I I don't. I don't know those group of guys that well to even know what competition they're doing or, or when they did compete or whatever, you know, I'm usually a bit more focused just on me mm-hmm. and getting what I need to be done. You know, I'm, I'm friendly with, with the guys, you yeah. know, and we'll, we'll bullshit and say, you know, you know, they'll, they'll be over there, you know, squatting 700 pounds or something. And I'll just be like, yeah, I, I, I'll, I, I curl that shit in the mornings to wake up. You know what I mean? We just kind of, <laughs> mess around like that but as far as you know what they're actually doing and competing yeah. i'm not i'm not uh i'm not up to date, not up to date. yeah i'm gonna start uh, asking some of the other guys too because i've been in gyms before where there's been that kind of element in there and it's been really confusing and kind of like the aura kind of sometimes the energy of the gym mm-hmm. kind of gets confused but it seems like everyone at syndicate's just like no it's those guys over there we're over here and then we, we all compete we're all athletes and it's just kind of how it works so yeah it interests it's, me you know yeah the, the a guy rents that space mm-hmm. And has his own, you know, uh, strength conditioning uh, brand that he has, you know, rented out on the corner yeah. of the of a 10,000 uh, 10, square foot facility. He has maybe well, however much. He's yeah, got. whatever, thousand feet or whatever, five hundred feet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, and then uh, there's not, you know, uh, you know, like I say, there's just some good camaraderie between, you know, making mm. you know, just busting each other's balls and yeah. And a lot of the older, a lot there's some older men in there. There's, there's like a 75 year old man in there that's in there, you know, moving some weight or can move more than I can. And uh, wow, so, so he gives me shit all the time. You know what I mean? And he's always interested in what what I got going on and how and uh, and and uh, always commenting on how um, how he likes how I train versus a lot of some of the other guys he sees and he thinks he thinks it's a smart way. And you know, you can learn a few things from the old cats. You know? Yeah. That's uh, that's great having a guy that old and they're busting your balls and, and mm-hmm. you, you looking up to him too. Because sounds like you're kind of like, you know, that guy can move more than I can. That's kind of it's yeah. a little, you know, that's that's awesome to have a guy that age be able to do that kind of stuff. Yeah, he can get down on the squat bar and he he can pull some weight up, man. It's pretty. Uh, and always telling us, man, I hope I hope when I'm 75, I can I can even fucking get to the gym. Like you do. <laughs> yeah, right. We can even much less be able to pick up, you know. <laughs> Well, let's let's talk about the Reebok deal. Um, as of the, the time of this this interview and the taping, some new information came out. Um, mm-hmm. The one through five, twenty five hundred, six through eleven, or six through through ten gets five thousand, and then eleven through twenty, whatever, gets ten thousand uh, for sponsorship yeah. deals. And then the champs get forty thousand per fight, and that's kind of where it's at. Um, so I, I started of realized, I started going back and kind of looking at like 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 the champ Joanna for the, the strawweight champ Joanna. Um, she's only got two fights in the UFC. So yeah. she gets twenty five hundred. Well, she gets forty thousand because she's a champ. But if she wasn't the champ, she'd only get twenty five hundred. Uh, Felice Herrig and and, and Carlos Spars, they've all got like two fights, yeah. you know, going on. So for them, it's, it's twenty five hundred. It's not that much money, and they were getting more from other situations. Yeah. For you, knowing what the number is now, now we all know what the number is. Is it is it more? Is it less? Or is it about the same of what you're getting per fight anyway? Um. Well, see, I'm I'm just confused because I thought that it was, uh, ten ten to 14 
thousand. Yeah, I could be I could be wrong on the on the numbers because I'm I'm just going off of them. I actually just read the the email uh, probably an hour ago, and okay. now it's now it said six uh, or, or uh, what was it? Uh, ten through fifteen is mm-hmm. ten grand. So I don't know if that's flat or is as you go up the high higher up closer to that fifteen if it gets closer to the oh. Uh, but cause that's what I thought. So I was pleased. I thought I was going to get in the higher tier, but now they just now what I just read it's it's ten grand. Wow! So for wow. you, for you, that's that's a cut. That's a pay cut for your fights. Mm-hmm. Is it a significant pay cut where you're like, I got to start rethinking this whole thing, or is it just like, oh, it's just a couple thousand dollars? I can kind of make it up, you know, on something. Yeah, I mean, you know, from five to seven grand. Okay. That's, that's that's. That's significant. That's that's for yeah. you the way you live. That's a couple of months of living. <laughs> that's a, you know, that that's a that's a lot of money coming in. You know, and so it does hurt. I know some other guys. I've talked to a couple of the fighters that kind of called me to, um, to give me the kind of scope scoop on it a little bit. We're talking about yeah, it's like cut them, cut them almost to an eighth of what they were making because they don't have that many fights in the UFC. They they just don't have that 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 numbers yet. So they don't get that. They don't get the money, and that's just yeah. part of the problem. I don't I don't know what to think of it. I mean, you know, the the thing the thing about it is. It's out of my hands, you know. It yes. really is. Um, I, you know, it's a pay. It's a pay cut for me if, uh, you know, if it's not what I was thinking it was to begin mm-hmm. with when they first kind of released that, and now it looks like it's more of a, a solid number five. You know, uh, one through five is this amount. Yeah. And not yeah. and not the higher up you are in that bracket, the closer you are to the next tier. Yeah, I thought I agree. I thought the same thing you did. I thought like at one, here's the number, and then as you moved up in fights, so as you got to six, there's a different number. Then seven was a different number. Then eight was a different number. But now they're saying one through five, boom. Six through ten, boom. Eleven through fifteen, boom. You know, sixteen through twenty. I was happy with that. I was happy with that first one. I was like, all right, well, I might be mm-hmm. missing, you know, two or three grand now. But now, yeah. Now, if that's the case, it's uh, a little bit not in my favor. Yeah, but like you said, it's out of your control. It, it just—it's part of the work in the deal. It's part of oh, working I, for the co- corporation. You know, what what am I going to do? Um, Get a, I don't know. If, I, I, and, I, and, I, and I and I suppose it's completely exclusive. No other sponsor at all can be on you at all. Yep. Not even like one. I mean, if they if they if they were able to, like, put a big spot just on the front of your shorts right there, where you could put one, you know, oh, extra, yeah. that would be awesome. Where they where they limit you to just one or something, but you know whatever. I just just it's not the not the deal they struck. So the easiest way to get it, the easiest way to make that money up is get submission of the night or knockout of the night or fight of the night. That's the easiest uh, way yeah. to fix that. Yeah. So yeah. let's talk about Kobe. Co- it's Kobe Covington, right? Kobe Covington. Yep, yeah. Kobe. Kobe He's Covington. what seven and zero. Oh? Seven and zero. Oh. And they're giving him you. Is it? Is it? To me, on paper, as I'm looking at this. And, and, you know, yell at me if I'm wrong, but it's kind of like, we want to do Mike a solid. We want to give him a guy that's, that's ranked we want, or a guy that's, that's undefeated. We want to give him a guy that, that's going to look on paper and look like a tough fight, but it's going to be a fight that, that Mike Powell can kind of pick his time, yeah. pick his pace and do his, and do his own thing. Is, is that kind of what I'm seeing with this? Um, say that last part again. That he's kind of pick that Mike Powell can pick his pace, pick what he wants to do. He's going to be comfortable. It's going to be a tough fight for him, but it's kind of. We're giving Mike a favor, like not, not. I don't want to say a favor, like that. You know, UFC doesn't give no, anybody he, favors, he, but like he's stepping in for someone else. Yeah, I know it's it a replacement, but there could have been twenty other guys that could have found a replacement. Well, the conversation I had with with Silva was everybody is stacked right now. Everybody's matched up. Everybody has fought, going yeah. to fight, and he said the pickings are going to be slim. Okay. Um, and you know, he just said, "I hate to bring you the bad news, but Spencer's hurt," mm-hmm. and there's. Everybody's lined up right now. He said it's looking like if anybody could get in there, it could be a newcomer. Or you know, what do you think about that? And I'm just like, well, let me hear some names and let's let's look it over. And yeah. you know, I want to fight, uh, you know, regardless. So he he gave me the he gave me the um, he gave me Kobe, and uh, so so we took it. You know, it was well. Wow, that's a that's a big growth for you because before you'd be like, yeah, whoever, good, we're good, we're good. Get, whatever it is, just give me somebody. I want to fight. I'm in training. I want to fight. And then now you're like, give me some names. Let's take a look at it. Let's try to mm-hmm. figure out. That's a that's a pretty good maturity from just maybe three years ago, two years ago. We've been like, nah, nah, whatever it is. I'm, I'm, I, you know, I want it. 
Yeah. If he had come back and said we can't find anybody, like, or or he gave me names that you're like, look, this isn't good matchups for me right now. Would you have? Would you have not fought? Uh, I would really, you know, prefer to fight because it's yeah. been a minute, you know, and I got bills. <laughs> um, and you know, I'm getting older, so I don't want to keep waiting, you know, too much longer. I don't know if I don't know if I would have or not. It would just depend mm. on. It would just depend on the circumstances, I suppose. Um, but at the end of the day, regardless of who he gave me, I probably would have, would have taken it just because um, at the end of the day, I was going to be in a fight yeah. to begin with. So this is just going to be a different fight. I mean, the, it, it was a 180. I went from a, a, a striker, mm-hmm. uh, a conventional striker, to a, to a left-handed wrestler. Yeah. So it was a complete um change when I'm, I'm you know i'm ready for the challenge i got great wrestlers that are that that are always at to my you know to, to my um to my access i have plenty of access to great wrestler um he, you know kobe's not really going to be able to you know show me too much that i haven't seen over the years right uh, and much less in, in this camp you know like i say i'm working with some good wrestlers so is it uh, was it a hard decision or not a hard decision? But was it hard to get those wrestlers to go? Hey, look, I sorry, I know, I know. In the beginning of camp, I was kind of like not talking to you, not hanging out with you because I have to be over here with these guys. But now I need to be with you guys. Was it hard to get some of those guys to come in? Because if a wrestler's mentality is like, you know, warriors training, warriors trying to get ready for whatever, even if we don't have something come yeah. up. But then it's like, oh crap, I got to go with my pile. I'm gonna spend a lot of time getting hit in the head. There's some of those guys kind of like, eh, I can do it on Tuesday from like 10:15 <laughs> to 10:45. They were, they were all about it. What time Good. do you need me? Good. About time, just what time do you need me? I was already working with one of the wrestlers because mm-hmm. I was working my offense. Oh, okay. Offensively for Spencer. Now I'm working more a little bit defensively, so I'm working with the same wrestler uh, that was that was helping me out, uh, you know, and putting me through drills and things like that um, prior to that. So the, the, the train, one of the training partners never changed. Perfect. So it, it's and, and and he was already lefty. Tom Tom Lawler is who I've been working with. Oh yeah. It, okay. He yeah. was already lefty anyway, and he was having to move right handed for me for for the wrestling. Yeah. Now now he can just do his thing and be lefty and you know and, and work his wrestling and and then he's a big strong he's a big yeah. strong. So I've been working hard with him and you know and I'll be ready. This is this is kind of the perfect storm for you. You have the great you have a great training camp. You got a great gym, and then it's at home. Like the, the fight, the yeah. fight's in Las Vegas. You don't have to go far. I just get in the car, drive down there, and get in a fight. You got to you got to check in the hotel on Tuesday before the fight, like everybody else. You, you're staying at home though, aren't you? Yeah, I'll go check in, and then Good. I'll go home. go home and, and hang out and put the boy to bed at night and kiss your wife oh, yeah. and have your own bed and your own food and yeah, okay, yeah. smart, smart. This this fight for me, I'm actually gonna be there. Uh, I uh, broke down and bought tickets for this one. Uh-oh. I wasn't uh, okay. yeah because I, I don't get nothing. I gotta, I gotta get on my own. So I went and I bought tickets for this one. I'm, I'm bringing uh, Jill with me. So we're, we're definitely gonna go. And this, this for me, I'm a little disappointed when Spencer pulled out because it was an exciting fight for me. It's one of the fights I wanted to see. You and I have been friends for a long time. So for me, this was a big deal for me to go watch you live again. And when Spencer pulled out, I was kind of like, oh, <laughs> yeah. damn it. And then because I didn't think they're gonna find another quality opponent for you so quickly. And then when they, yeah. when they found Colby, I was like, oh, this is, this is different. This is gonna be interesting. Yeah. Let's see how this one works out. So. I'll be there rooting for you no matter what happens. You know, it's it's. I'm always gonna be in your corner, and this for me is huge. And and I can't wait to see you fight live. It's it's always fun to watch you walk out there and, and see how calm you get inside the cage once that once that door closes and it's time to rock. You just kind of like you. We talked about Zen earlier. You going fishing to find your Zen. You yeah. seem to find your Zen sometimes right there in the middle of the, in the middle of the cage. And I never could figure oh, yeah. it out how you did it because I could never do it. But you just find seem yourself at peace and at calm when you're when you're in there throwing punches. Yeah, I don't know. I can't explain it. It's a power within, man. I don't know. <laughs> it's amazing. Mike, thanks for spending some time with us. Uh, go kiss that baby for me. We'll talk to you later. Thanks for having me.